Twelves, welcome to um, Exam Prep Business Studies Forms of Ownership. My name is uh, Kalen Mazokere. I'm the author of the Distinction Bound Student Textbooks. I have Economics Grade 10, 11, and 12. Then I also have Business Studies Grade 11 and 12. So, in this lesson, we're going to focus on uh, past papers from the Department of Basic Education, and our focus e topic is Forms of Ownership. And I'm doing this to prepare you for paper two. Uh, uh, and the, I'm focusing right now on business ventures. So there are five topics that I'm uh, currently doing. I've already uh, done a video on uh, management and leadership. I've also done investment securities. And so this is my third video of the five uh, in this forms of ownership. Then I'm going to do <clears throat> uh, insurance and then i'll conclude with uh presentation all right so let's get started all right the first question we have here or, or before we go to the questions all right let me just point out something uh we have uh the following forms of ownership i i hope i won't skip any right we have sole trader we have partnerships close corporation cooperatives private companies public companies personal liability company non-profit company state-owned company i hope i didn't leave out anything there then when it comes to the factors that we consider uh, before choosing which form of ownership we look at capacity we look at membership the name management tax uh, the capital requirements division of profits legislation as in is it a personal legal entity or separate legal entity uh, we look at uh, what do you call it liability is it limited or unlimited we look at continuity is there continuity or it's not there right then the other thing uh, for, for grade 12 uh, after knowing this uh, obviously this is grade 10 and 11 uh, information uh, upon knowing this you must know advantages and disadvantages of each form of ownership but most importantly, we want um, the, 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 what, the factors uh, that, that can influence, let's say, what success or failure of each form of ownership. So you must know like success factors and failure factors with all those things that I told you, like capacity management, tax, capital, division of profit, legislation. All right, so that's the main thing that you go, you're going to come across. And so for this topic, mainly you will see, you'll be a, you, you must be able to draw some tables because it's easier to do these comparisons in tables. All right, like you see here, explain how the following factor, you see, can contribute to the success and or failure of non-profit companies. So you should know for each of these companies that I told you, you should know capital, you should know legislation, you should know just like I said. All right, so let's see here we are working with capital and we want so how many columns do you think you need here uh, I'll, I'll give you time to sort of uh, you know tell me how many columns do you think are needed right now do you think we need three columns or you need think we need four what are you going to write in the first column and so on all right let's see how many things are we asking here uh, we want number one we want success number two we want failure and for all this we want it for what for a non-profit company so your table is going to look like this all right so we you have your success factors and you have your failure factors and then you write capital day because in some cases this question will be they're asking capital and they're asking management so as you draw you can draw something like this you're done with capital and you can merge that sell for capital the, those three uh, i didn't do that i should have done that to show that all these things capital then below that then you go to let's say management or legislation whatever the case is all right so let's have a look uh, that non-profit company so first and foremost you need to have that background you know like you need to know like what is that non-profit company um you know uh, what is the capacity, how many people, and so on. Right, so with this one, 
a non-profit company in terms of capacity it will depend on the sponsor whoever is sponsoring because this one is a non-profit company so the capacity to grow depends on who's donating to that company or who's funding the company the next one is it needs uh, three or more members and so this tells you that we call them members and because i'm saying this because uh, in some cases we call them partners in some cases we call them uh you know shareholders and so on right then uh, the name must end with npc the npc stands for non-profit company it need it it should be managed by three or more directors and then the the the, the company pays business tax and then uh capital it relies on the sponsors just like i said on capacity and then no profits as uh, are what are shared because you know when it comes to division of profit and then the last part okay no no before that i think i'm leaving out what do you call this one legislation yeah a non-profit company is a separate separate legal personality or separate legal entity which means uh let's say if you sue a non-profit company you are not suing its directors uh you're actually suing the company because it it exists as a separate legal entity so it's more like a person on itself and so it means it can sue it can be sued it can own property it can own assets you know because it's a separate legal personality anyway that is why it pays tax as uh, like business tax because if it wasn't uh, the, the like a sole trader a sole trader will pay tax uh, like personal income tax tax on his income because he cannot be separated from his sole proprietorship uh, he, he so we say there is no personal legal entity or personality and then uh, liability is limited that means uh, you know but obviously liability should be limited because this one is a separate legal personality it's only unlimited for when the the the, the, the personal legal entity is not there for instance in a sole tra trader or sole proprietorship unlimited is uh, liabilities unlimited and then continuity yes this thing has continuity anything that separates that exists separate from the owner has continuity all right so with that in mind let's have a look at uh, because by with that in mind i wanted you to have a background on what a non-profit company is all right so let's look at success factors capital all right capital is unlimited oh unlimited number of founders may contribute more capital to the company so that can lead to um to, to success but in as far as capital is concerned also founders may contribute limited capital or may not contribute capital at all which may not be sufficient for the establishment operation of the company so with that it could lead to failure of a non-profit company more capital may be raised uh, through donations, sponsorships, uh, for operations and expansion. But on the other hand, the company depends or it relies on donations. Therefore, uh, you know, its, its growth is, is um, at risk uh, because if there are no donations or, or sponsors, then it may struggle to grow. Right, another success factor, it is easy to raise funds or capital as donors enjoy tax benefits uh yes that one may be true as well the non-profit companies may struggle to raise enough capital or funds if they fail to convince donors or donations uh, are misused all right so basically here what you're doing is you just simply mentioning the things that could because if you look at these statements they could sound contradictory but uh, the truth is you are going to see a non-profit company there that is doing very well then you are going to see another non-profit company that's not doing well you ask that one that's doing well like why is it that you guys are expanding uh it's probably because for them they'll tell you oh it has been so easy to raise funds then you go to another one that is not doing well they'll tell you oh it's been difficult for us to grow 
because funds are misused or we 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 are looking for donations and no one is stepping up or because it might be difficult for them to convince people to donate to them so these statement uh, statements are not like contradictory but we are simply saying what factors when we look at capital what factors could lead to success of a non-profit company and also when we're looking at that same aspect of capital what factors could lead to failure of a non-profit company all right then uh, with the same non-profit company you know what it is let's look at management what factors could lead to success and what factors could lead to failure all right let's start with uh success and uh, i think it's better if i go with success and i'm done then i go to failure factors right with success a non-profit company may be well managed as it requires a minimum of three directors. I mentioned this when I was giving you an overview of what a nonprofit company is. Right, the next one, uh, more directors may be appointed to bring more skills or ideas or innovations um, or expertise to the nonprofit company. The next one, the, the, the legally uh, prescribed management structure ensures a well-organized company. Right, then looking at um, failure factors, uh, let's have a look at things that could hamper, uh, you know, success of a non-profit company in as far as management is concerned. Right, large management structure can be complicated or delay decisions. And then directors may mismanage business funds as they, uh, they may not have a direct interest in the non-profit company. And then directors are liable for any loss or damage cost sustained uh, by the company. Okay, so these factors could lead to failure. Right, compare a partnership and a personal liability company as forms of ownership uh, in terms of the following criteria. All right, a partnership. Okay, let's, let me not like do what I did with non-profit company. Let's just dive straight into it. So I mentioned continuity before when I was talking about non-profit company, right? So you look at liability. Ah, no, 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 no. You look at uh, legislation, right? With that, if we say uh, um, what a, a form of ownership has no, uh, no, no, no personal legal entity, uh, then that thing is no continuity. When the owner or the owners die, then that thing dies. So in this case, we look at partnerships. These ones, they have no personal, um, no no personal legal entity, but then or no legal entity or no legal personality, whatever you want to call it. But then, if we look at a personal liability company, uh, this one is a separate legal entity, or it can exist as a separate. So it's it's more like this thing is a is another person. Because if you look at these things, they will have, uh, let's say, for look at a private company or a public company, it has a number that is issued by CIPC, Companies and Intellectual Property Commission, right? So CIPC will issue a number. That number is, uh, what can I say? That number is um, something like an ID number for an, an individual. And uh, you then take that number, you go to SARS, you register that company, that entity as a taxpayer. And then you go to uh, Audi and buy a car in the name of this thing. So this thing is like a person. It has an ID number, which is an identification number, which you get from CIPC. It has a tax number. Uh, this thing can buy assets. It can own assets. Just like we say that, oh, these buses belong to Greyhound, uh, you know, those buses won't be belonging to a person, but they belong to a company. So we say that company is a separate legal entity. Okay. And in, in that case, that thing has uh, limited liability. So if you look at a partnership, it is unlimited liability, no separate legal personality or entity. And so obviously there's no continuity there. But if we look at a personal liability company, there is continuity. 
Then let's look at tax. Partners pay tax. Why are they paying tax? Because this thing has no separate personal legal personality. So it is no tax number as a partnership. Partners are paying tax in their personal capacity. But if we look at personal liability company, the companies and shareholders are taxed separately. That means the company is a tax number. So the company is a person on its own. So this one was easy. All right, let's look at this one. Explain the difference between partnerships and private companies. All right. Uh, and it doesn't really say using what criteria. So you can use any one of the things that I was telling you earlier. Let's look at partnerships. Uh, we Before we even look at what I see there, uh, we can even say owners are called partners and their owners are called shareholders. That's one of the differences, what we call the owners. Okay, another thing, partners contribute skills, assets, and capital. Shareholders contribute share share capital okay uh no specific name requirement for a partnership yes that's true may be any acceptable name uh so if we say acceptable does it mean then you could come up with a name and they say no 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 this one is not acceptable yes of course let's say if the name can be offensive let's say that the name is discriminatory uh it's mocking a certain group let's say it's mocking black people you know uh, so it can it won't be acceptable uh, another one could be like let's say you start a partnership and then you call it cutting limited that's misleading it won't be acceptable because it's misleading in the sense that it sounds like it's a public company because it's ending with limited so it can't be acceptable all right so that's what is meant by that Otherwise, you can come up with any name as long as that name is not offensive. It, it's not saying CC because the minute you say CC, uh, you know, it becomes a close corporation. The minute you say PTY LTD, it becomes a private company. So anything acceptable. On the other hand, for a private company, it must end with PTY LTD, which stands for Proprietary Limited. Uh, only okay a partnership only needs a partnership agreement for establishment however a private company will need a memorandum of incorporation with the with CIPC right then uh, partnerships partners have unlimited liability that means um, if they and and also they are if even if it's done by one partner this is one of the worst forms of ownership one can ever think about having because uh, you are not just liable to what you do as an individual, you are liable to what any of the partners do uh, on behalf of the partnership, even if you were not there, even if you even objected the action. Let's say one of your partners decided to go and get a loan and then get it, and then now uh, they, he misused the funds. Uh, you are also liable, even though you, you didn't know that he did that. So when it comes to repossession, they can take your house, take your car, even though you didn't know that your partner did that. So that, that is what we mean by liabilities unlimited. And then on the other hand, for a private company, shareholders have limited liabilities. So it means if the company does something, you as a shareholder, you are not liable. Like you don't have, you are not answerable. Let, let's put it that way. All right, um, difference between all, so it's a continuation of that. Uh, partnership has no continuity, but a company has continuity. That means a, a company can exist, you know, uh, for as long as it takes. Then partners are all um, actively involved, but in terms of a company, companies managed by at least one director. Partnerships, uh, a part partnership does not pay income tax but partners pay tax. Uh, okay, sorry, I pressed this by mistake. On the other hand, when it comes to tax, the company pays tax um, as a company because it has a tax number. So that's the difference when it comes to taxation. And that's the last thing that was there. All right, let's move on to the next one. Motivate why a state-owned company is important. Okay, All right. Uh, number one, profits may be used to finance other state departments or reduce taxes. Uh, generates income to finance social programs. That's good. 
uh, jobs are created for all skills levels, offers essential service uh, which may not be offered by the private sector. Uh, prices are kept reasonable. It creates sound comp competition with the private sector to make services affordable to more citizens. And then wasteful duplication of services is eliminated. And the last one, planning can be coordinated through central control. Right, next one. DB, DZP, whatever, and Sans Trading uh, is a successful partnership. Okay, so we know which form of ownership it is. But the partners uh, want to change uh, to a form of ownership where it will be compulsory to audit financial reports. So name a new form of ownership that will be suitable for these guys. Okay, it's a public company. Okay, the reason is because of what they're saying there about compulsory audits because it won't be for a public company. I discuss the advantages of the form of ownership. Okay, why is it a good thing to have a public company? Okay, number one, uh, the business has its own legal identity. Like I've been saying this, it can own assets or property. That's a good thing. Easy to raise large amounts of capital for group, for growth. Because people have money, they take it to the JSE, they invest it there, uh, you know, so they buy companies that they think will give them good returns. So that money goes to those companies and they use those companies use the money to uh, run businesses, to expand, to, to, to start, whatever it might be. All right, uh, shareholders have limited liability, that means, you know, uh, there is limited claim on your personal assets in case uh, something goes wrong. Uh, competent and knowledgeable directors may, may be appointed by shareholders and then it attracts small investors. Yes, someone comes with 2,000, the other person comes with 1,000. So many people come with money, they buy those shares and the next thing you know, this company has money to grow. Right, uh, no limitations on the number of shareholders, so as many people can buy shares as they can. And then additional capital can be raised by issuing uh, debentures to the public. And then uh, the last one, uh, the public has access to the company's financial information as financial reports have to be published annually. It's a must. Right, Mapula Hairdressing Salon. Okay, let's see what this one did. Um, it specializes in the latest unisex hairstyles. Mapule is the only owner of the business and is also responsible for all business risks. That means this is a sole trader. Uh, the fact that you're the only person doesn't automatically mean you're a sole trader. But I'm saying this because of what it says there. Uh, he, she's responsible for all the business risk. All right, identify the form of ownership. I would say that's a sole trader, yes. The, the motivation will be the risk part, yes. Explain how division of profit and legislation. Okay, so this one will be a table again, uh, something like this. So let's look at division of profit first and foremost. But for what? Explain how division of profit and legislation may influence the success and failure of the form of ownership identified. So look, if you got that wrong, you say it's a partnership. So you are busy discussing division of profit for a partnership. So you must be careful when it comes to that. All right, let's look. For a sole trader, owner receives all profits from the business. That's success. The owner may use profits to expand the business. When it comes to failure, profits may not be large enough for expansion or profits may not cover all business debts. Owner may decide not to expand. Right, let's move on to legislation. It is important, uh, uh, it is easy or inexpensive to start. There are lim uh, limited regulatory requirements regarded, uh, regarding the name of the business. And then it is not compulsory to have financial statements audited. And then failure. Business may, may only qualify for uh, more loans may only qualify for more loans if they are licensed loans um okay so it's it it's simply saying here yeah, they may not qualify for so many things 
right business has no legal entity that means a liability is unlimited and the owner can be sued held responsible for the debts of the business and then there's no way to run then the last one business has no continuity as it depends on the life of the owner right next extract z and q attorneys zama and quinton are qualified lawyers who have started a business called z and t attorneys okay which uh lakes continuity so it's a partnership they have they want to convert their business into a personal liability company so do you see there's always this thing of converting 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 so be careful of such questions ne? right name the form of ownership that that will be a partnership and the motivation is because yes you see it there it lacks continuity that's the biggest thing these people with more than one and yeah it lacks continuity if it was a, a cc it would have it if it was a private company there would be co continuity it's not a sole trader because already there are two people right describe the success factors of the form of ownership identified and those of the of a personal liability company okay so let's see how many things describe the success factors of the form of ownership identified and those of okay sharp right so management for a partnership compare that to management for a personal liability company so you can pause and go through this one and then the next one is tax you can have a look at tax all right i'm not going to because you can read obviously but the biggest things that i was explaining i hope yes you you got that and then we have division of profit pause and then take some notes and then yes that's that the uh this differentiate between limited and unlimited liability okay uh let's look at limited liability losses are limited to the amount that the owner invested in the business so that means uh if you invested ten thousand and then something happens to the company and then you only stand to lose that ten thousand like they they are not going to come after you and uh take okay let's say for instance i buy shares for of naspas naspas is a public company so i become a, a shareholder of naspas then uh, Naspers does something uh, and then they go bankrupt, something like that. And now the people that they owe, they want their money. So obviously they'll take my, ten, my investment to, to pay the debt. Like, so as an investor, I'm going to lose that investment. Let's say it was 20,000, I'll lose that 20,000. But they won't say since uh, we have not recovered fully recovered the money that you naspers owe us now we are coming for the shareholders then they come to my house and they take my cat to 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 you know to pay for what i'm owing for what the company is owing now they cannot do that because i stand to lose only what i invested and my personal belongings have nothing to do with this because that is a company and i am Carden, so we are separate entities so what that one did is not what i did so the person who's in trouble is naspas not me so they i can only lose what i invested that's the point so that's limited liability which is the opposite if it was a sole trader for instance they'll come after my things they'll take my cat my dog everything all right just to get their money back all right so if the owner or partner is sued by creditors the owner may uh, must pay the debt even if the owner does not have money you see so that's liabilities unlimited and if you don't have money they'll come for uh they, they will send maybe you know someone you and uh, they send a sheriff to you know take your your assets let's say your couch your tv they go and auction that and get money to pay the debt so the owner's personal, uh, personal assets are protected against the debts of the business. On the other hand, the owner's personal assets may be seized, just like I'm saying here. 
All right, distinguish between a private and a public company. Okay, the main distinction is that this one is the shares are on sold to the general public and the other one not to the general public. Shares are not freely transferable. On the other hand, shares are freely transferable. Minimum of one director, minimum of three directors. Name ends with PTY, name ends with LTD. Right, the next one, uh, distinguished, oh, it's a continuation of the distinction. Okay, it's simple, it's easy, and uh, you can have a look. Right, the next one, discuss the importance of a state-owned company. We saw this one already. I'm not going to go through it. I'll just pass, and uh, we go to the next slide. Uh, John's Beverages, PTYLTD, that is a private company wants uh, to convert into um, to convert their current company uh, status to Jones Beverage Limited so they want to go public uh, so that they can invite public to buy uh, shares in the business identify two forms of ownership that are applicable to Jones Beverage motivate your answer okay so we have a private and a public company and then motivation the names Right, uh, explain the advantages of the form of ownership represented by John's uh, Beverage Limited. Okay, so that will be uh, advantages of a public company because th the word limited is telling us it's a public company. Okay, so the business has its own legal identity and can own assets and so on. Easy to raise, raise large sums of money or uh, through issuing of shares to the general public. Uh, shareholders have uh, limited liability for the debts of the company or shareholders may only lose, mm, oh, that says lose, may only lose, uh, remove one or the, the, the amount which they invested. And then uh, competent and knowledgeable directors may be appointed by shareholders it can attract small investors as shareholders, as uh, shares can be transfer, transferred freely and easily. And uh, you can never look at the rest because we've done this. Okay, so this brings us, because uh, this will be the last slide. This brings us to the end of forms of business ownership. Um, as usual, I'd like to thank you for watching and uh, I hope to see you again in the next video. Uh, so this is the journey we're walking together. 